Good morning, Timberlake students, and welcome to our online experience. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Before we get into service, I just wanted to say welcome home. Regardless of where you are watching this morning, this is a place where you belong. So feel free to hop into the chat to the side and start talking to some people, say good morning. And with that, I just hope you grab your coffee, you get comfortable because we're gonna get started on worship in a moment. Our prayer is that this time is a time where you can fully connect with God and really encounter his experience regardless of where you're watching today. hope I will believe Your raging wars you fight for peace You have always made a way A path of beauty you create And I know your love is strong I'm a junior here at Eastlake and I'm here to share a verse with you today, 1 Kings 18, 43 to 44. So in this story, Israel has been in a drought for three years. Um, so a man named Elijah asked a servant to go check to see if there's been rain. So it goes like this, go and look towards the sea, he told his servant, and he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time a servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So what this verse means to me is that God's timing is always above ours. Whenever I get caught up in my circumstances, it's so easy for me to change the outcome based on what I want and not what God wants. But stories like these, like the people of Israel waited three years for God to give them a drop of rain, just reminds me that 
God's timing may not be when we expect or what we expected, but it's perfect and God is always working. So I just encourage you guys today to leave everything in God's hands and keep trusting him because he's forever going to be faithful to us. Uh, so yeah, that's my student to student. I hope you guys take this into the following week. Uh, see you guys later. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Clara. So basically, now that we're totally online, um, we have to worry about copyright claims with any kind of music we have. So I had to take out the song that we usually have in the Memes of the Week intro, but I didn't want to find a new song and I didn't want to make a new intro. So what you're about to hear is uh, me doing an acapella version of Chief Keef's Earned It, the Wii remix by Extreme Rap Union. Um, so I'm so sorry. I promise it's only like 20 seconds long, so just hang in there. Um, happy Sunday. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, bye bye. Do 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 Hey, the beat go off? Na 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 Dude, your soda's on your car. <laughs> your soda's on your car. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. What's up, Timberlake students? Uh, we're so glad that you're joining us for our live service. We're starting a new series called Table Talk, The Truth You Want to Hear. And I have one of my friends and a guest on service right now for the, for the message answering your questions. Go ahead. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, students. My name is Sierra. I am so honored to be here. I am the Timberlake Duval Student Ministry Pastor. A lot of words, but pretty much oh. I'm Jordan Roll and yeah. Duval. Yes. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, yeah, that's what I do. I'm excited to hang out, answer some questions. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun as well. So first of all, tell me your favorite quarantine show or or movie that you've watched so far during this this quarantine lock lock in season. Yes, my um, favorite show in the season and of all time is I Zombie on Netflix. It's real cheesy. It's not scary, um, but it's really clever, and so I like it. It's about a girl who eats brains to solve crime real good <laughs> hey, interesting <laughs> okay we're gonna play a game really quick before we get started this game is called 10 second challenge now you might see this for the next couple weeks so you have 10 seconds to grab an item that i'm going to tell you to your best ability it's okay if you don't get it in 10 seconds you're just you're failing all your duval students no i'm kidding okay are you ready you have 10 seconds yeah. all right the item is three two one a dog go Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. I hear the dog. Four, three, two, one. Negative. Oh, there it is! Right on time, buzzer beater. What is your dog's name? This is Katie. Um, she's our little special dog. So. Aww, Katie is cute. What kind of dog? Don't ask me that. Don't, we I don't know. know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for playing the 10 second challenge. Uh, maybe okay. you got maybe you got a little cardio in. Maybe your heart your heart rate's up. No, I'm kidding. My Apple Watch. Is <laughs> okay. So each week we're gonna answer questions that we've asked students uh, to submit questions to, and so we already have a big pool of it. If you have not submitted a question, we'll put the number on the screen, and you can text that uh, text a question anytime right now. Let us know. We want to just answer questions candidly topics that you've always wanted to know about in the church, relationships, social media, literally anything, we'd love to answer it. And so we're gonna just start doing that in this episode. So the first question, I'll, I'll answer this one, is how do you get a girlfriend on TikTok? Actually, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna answer that one. That, that's tough. If you're looking for a girlfriend on TikTok, you might be, you might be looking at the wrong place. Okay, let's, let's find a real question here. Okay, we got one that was, how do I stay close to God? during quarantine? I love this question. I love this question a lot. It's funny because we have, I don't know if you've experienced this. We've had so much free, we have so much free time 
And there's some days where I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't even like made time for God. And it seems like in a time where we do have a lot of time, we should be close to God. That's not always the case. And so I think the number one way for us to stay close to God during quarantine is intention. We have to be intentional about our relationship with God. And so that looks like making, uh, if you're a morning person, make it a morning time. If you're a night person, do it before bed. That doesn't work for me, so I have to do it in the morning. But figure out a time and be intentional every day about, hey, this is this is what I'm going to do and create a routine because we, we really need routines during this time. And I know a lot of you have started up school again and that's helped your routine. So add God into that routine. So pretty much just be intentional. Okay, here's an, another question we got. I have off seasons with God, but how do you reconnect with him or how do you get reconnected with him? Sierra, do you want to answer that one? I actually, this speaks to my heart a lot because I feel like all of life is so fluctuating. I like to think of my life as a roller coaster and that applies to my faith too. <laughs> too and so I've gone through seasons where like things are super great and I'm at summer camp and we're raising our hands in worship and it's awesome um but then there's other seasons I feel like kind of this season where it's a little bit hard to feel connected and for me I've kind of broken my like when I get in those seasons I have to think of it in like three steps and those steps are number one I have to acknowledge that it's literally impossible to be perfect all the time I like having a plan I've always been like a straight-a student and so when I think of my faith, I sometimes look at it as like a checklist. And if I'm not doing everything, then God's really, really far off. But that's just not the case. Because even when I feel disconnected, God still is there. And so I have to remind myself that I'm just a human and this is just a feeling. Um, and then secondly, I have to recognize and force myself to stick to one habit that invites God into my life. So just like you were saying, Jordan, being intentional about like staying connected in the season is so important. And so for me, what that looks like is prayer. Prayer is a huge thing. Like as I'm still in my bed in the morning, you guys, I will lay there. I just open my eyes and be like, Hey God, like help me with my unbelief. That's one of my favorite Bible verses. It's about this dude. You guys can look it up later. Um, but sometimes you just have to admit that I don't know what I'm doing. I don't always feel 100% God, but help me even though I don't feel it. And then finally, trust that even though God feels distant in the season, he's not. And just expect that you will get back to a point where God is close. You feel God again, but this is just a season. Just like winter turns into spring, you're going to go back. Right. <laughs> That's so good. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. And it just reminds me of, you know, the story of the prodigal son. If you don't know that story, it's all about a son who who kind of abandons his dad and disobeys him, goes off and does his own thing, and the father accepts him every every the father accepts him, and that's how God does every single time. So, in our off seasons, which can totally feel like off seasons, uh, there's no off seasons for God, and He's always right there. And so I love love what you talked about there. Okay, here's a question we got. Um, I love this question. Are God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit the same thing? Okay, I'm going to do the 10-second challenge because I have a, a perfect illustration for this. Okay, count me down. Count me down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I feel like I'm counting fast. 4, 3, 2, 1. There you go. <laughs> he did. This is my illustration. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so this, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my illustration. Is an egg. You guessed it. An egg. So uh, I love this question. Are God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit the same thing? Yes and no. They're three different parts, but we believe they're all God, and it's the, the Trinity. And so I describe it as an egg. So the egg is one whole thing. There's the outside shell, and then there's the egg white, and there's the yolk. It's all an egg. And so when we look at – I don't know what to do with this. I'm just going to give this to my dog. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we – when we look at the Holy Spirit, God, and, the, and Jesus, it's all the same thing. They're all God, but they have different purposes and different roles. And I love scripture. Jesus says, it'll be better if I leave because you'll have my spirit, my, my power. And that's, that's true. Once Jesus died and rose again, then came the spirit, and now we get the spirit. And the spirit is what leads us and comforts us and counsels us. The scripture says it's an advocate for us, and, and that's what the spirit does. And Jesus died for us, and then God the Father sent Jesus. So they all have different roles and different, uh, just, you know, they're, they're different in their ways, but they're same as God. And so, yes and no. <laughs> but just think about the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus are all, are, God the Father and Jesus are all uh, all God, and think of it as an egg. I hope that helped. There's also the, the water uh, example where it's water, ice, ice yeah, or vapor. Um, they're all the yeah. same thing. So that's a great question. Uh, I, I love that question. Okay, here's the next one. Um, let's see. How do I know I am pleasing in God's sight? 
That is, that's a great question. Do you want to answer that one? That's a good one. I think, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so for me, I feel like we all struggle with just what do we look like? We all look in the mirror and I can pick out 10 things about myself right now that I don't like. And so I've always kind of struggled with what does God think about me? Especially in terms of like, when you think of all the things you've done, it's like, oh man, how does he even love me? And so this has kind of been like my life journey and my faith walk has just been constantly going back to the Bible and seeing what God has to say about his people and specifically about those who follow him, which I'm included, you're included, you guys are all included. Um, and the Bible's not silent about what God thinks about us or how he sees us. And so um, a few of my favorite verses, actually, there's one in Zechariah that calls us his precious possession. So if you think of like jewels or maybe a piece of jewelry or some nice shoes that you have, like your precious possession, that's exactly how God sees you. And then in First Peter 2, it says that we're chosen and called by God. Like God wants us on his team specifically. And then finally, another huge one for me is Matthew 10 talks about how God knows the number of hairs on his head, um, our head and his head. <laughs> but to me like that, may seem a little strange. I mean, you're like, why does he know how many hairs on my head? That's weird. Um, but just think about how much he has to care to even count your hairs. Like, why would someone not care about you if they knew that fact about you? And so I think that God thinks we're pretty cool. But <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Especially me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I think you bring some... Uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing those scriptures. I think that's such a, a great idea to or a great reminder of, of how intentional God's love for us and how much he cares for us. And so whoever asked that question, know that you are, you are pleasing in God's eyes and he loves you no matter what. Um, and those are some great examples of that. Okay. Why are the old Testament and new Testament different? I'll go ahead and tackle this one. So in the Bible, there's the old Testament and there's the new Testament. Now, another good illustration. I love illustrations. I, I've seen this one time. Imagine I pulled out my ID and my ID is a picture of, of me and it, you know, it represents who I am, but it's just my ID and I'm the real thing. Uh, and so the reason why that's a great illustration for Old Testament and New Testament is because the old part of the Bible, it, it all matters and it is, is important, but it points to Jesus. And without Jesus, nothing matters. And Jesus fulfilled everything. Um, and so when it comes to the Old Testament, it was a lot different. And there, there is quite frankly, some weird stuff in there. But at the end of the day, it all points towards Jesus and it all leads to Jesus dying for us, um, letting us have eternal life. And so the Old Testament is very important, uh, but it all points to Jesus in the New Testament, which is the new promise that Jesus came for us. And so in the Old Testament, you see a lot of uh, a lot of performance and rules and all these these crazy practices. And if you didn't fulfill those, then you had to sacrifice something. And there's these there's just these crazy things that were happening in Jesus. Jesus kind of abolished all of that. And Jesus allows us to have a relationship with God because of what, he, what he's done. So the Old Testament points to Jesus. It's important, but it points to Jesus in the New Testament. So that's kind of, I guess, why the Old Testament and New Testament, New Testament are different. Okay, I think this is our last question for the day. Uh, it's a good one and it has a lot of different answers. Um, but I'd love to hear what you think, Sierra. What is worship? What is worship to you? What do you, what do you believe it is? Yeah. This is a big question. I feel like you guys ask big questions here. I like it. Um, but worship, for me specifically, I grew up at church, so I always thought worship was Sunday morning, everyone stands up, the weird people raise their hands, the normal people just, like, stand silently and, like, maybe sing. Um, but until, it wasn't until, like, junior high, high school, so the age of our students, yeah. um, where I kind of figured out that, number one, it's not weird to raise your hand in worship. I personally do it now, but also number two, worship is so much more than music or like a practice we do on Sunday. And the moment I realized that worship is just like a lifestyle, it's how we honor God Sunday to Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, that is what really kind of changed my life because it just keeps me focused, whether it's listening to worship music or reading my Bible or washing my mom's car or literally anything that you're doing good. Um, any way that you are honoring God and his creation, that is what worship is. It's not just a song. And so um, I feel like we just have to remind ourselves that God is holy and set apart. And anytime we're reminding ourselves of that, that's what true worship is. Right. That's so good. I love, yeah, I literally talked about it's, it's kind of a lifestyle and we can worship God in, in everything that we do. 
And that's what scripture tells us to do is to worship him and our bodies are living sacrifice because he's given us breath. He's given us our lives. And so we give it back by worship, by our worship. And so that's such a good answer. Uh, Sierra, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, I hope this is helpful for you guys watching. Make sure to text that number with any questions you have. We just want to talk about the truth. And so anything you've always wondered about, about the Bible, like I said, God, anything, we want to help answer those questions. But before we go, Sierra, I would love for you to pray for us. Why don't you pray for the world, the people on the front line uh, battling coronavirus, and for our students. Awesome, yes. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to gather over YouTube and different social media platforms to still say that we love you and we see you amidst the chaos. God, I pray that you would be with every single person on the front line that is whether they're in the medical profession or sanitation or literally anything, God, people who are still kind of risking their safety to help others. Lord, I pray that you would bless them and you'd be with them and you'd keep them healthy. God, I also want to pray for our students. Lord, I pray that you continue to reveal yourself to them and inspire them to really chase a relationship with you because you are good and you have such great plans for every single person. Lord, thank you so much for who you are, all you've done and all you continue to do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, we're so glad you guys could join us this weekend. We hope to see you guys next weekend, same time, same place, right back here. Until then, make sure that you guys like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social medias at T Lake HSM and T Lake MSM so that you guys can stay up to date with everything that's going on in the community. Hey, we love you guys and we'll see you guys next week.